Hello and welcome to another video. I am Professor Dr. Moina Mughal from Chemistry with a scheme in my hand and I am heading towards my laboratory which is hopefully be full with my students and yes it is students are waiting yes you can see an empty lab half empty lab so I will continue in a minute so today you are going to start uh, preparation of nitro benzene that is para nitro benzene your nitro group will be attached at the para position in the end with the uh, release of water molecule in the end now this is simply a reaction in which uh, you are going to nitrate benzene uh, with a nitrating mixture and I hope everyone knows what is a nitrating mixture it's a mixture of nitrate concentrated nitric and sulfuric acid so first of all you are going to do the mixing and then you are going to attach it with a reflux conden condenser now this reaction needs further uh, heating and you have to keep that thing in your mind that when you are mixing the reagents together uh, your temperature is supposed to be under 50 degrees centigrade it should not exceed 50 degrees centigrade so that's it um, now when you will uh, mix the whole uh, reagents together I mean when you will do the nitration after that you are going to use a reflux condenser what is a reflux condenser now, this is a condenser it has got a, you can, it's a simple condenser right it has got two walls the outer wall and the inner wall and you know that the water circulates where at the surroundings of the uh, inner wall the inner wall the water circulates around it so, right so that the molecule the vapors that are the hot vapors that are going upwards that are moving towards up, uh, up, upward direction they are going to drop back as due to the condensation process as the, what is condensation it will cool down the water is cool the surrounding is cool so it will condense down the hot vapors that are emerging from this flask you are going to attach this flask here like this right now this is the position called refluxing right wherever when your the position of your condenser is like that it is called it is called distillation this is called distillation right here you are going to get an adapter and you are going to uh, and your condenser will be a little bit uh, tilted it should not be like that it should never be like that when you are distilling Right now we are talking about uh, refluxing, so this is called, this is a refluxing uh, apparatus, right, and we're refluxing, uh, you can say, uh, assembly, right, these are the water outlet, inlet and outlets are there, right, now what will happen, when you will start refluxing your uh, sample, you will add the mixture here, the nitrating mixture will be inside, right, now what will happen, the vapors will start moving upwards and then they are cooled. They will cool down with the help of this, uh, because of this condensation process that will go on. And when the first drop, it dro it gets down into the reaction mixture. When the vapors are moving upwards and the best, you are going to note down the temperature when your refluxing starts. It's not like that, that when you have now uh, arranged the refluxing apparatus and you have, uh, I mean, put it on the, uh, you have uh, started recording the heating time at, at that moment. No, you will record the time. The time is mentioned here for how long you are going to reflux it. So that time starts when, when the first drop, it drops it back into your, the vapor, it drops back into the reaction mixture. You will say your refluxing has started. Your refluxing has initially it begins right when the first drop goes down back into the reaction mixture that is bubbling right that is bubbling right and during this whole process you need to always maintain the temperature your eyes should be fixed on the temperature because you know the reactions they are all about the temperatures at which temperature you are reacting the mixture and this is simply nitration of benzene and you're going to get your product which is your para nitro benzene so uh, it is the procedure is very simple now in a conical flask or a round bottom flask there is no i mean uh, necessary that you shouldn't use a conical flask you can use a round bottom flask also no problem you can use a round bottom flask you will add what one ml of concentrated nitric and and one to two ml of the um, this sulfuric acid right in a small portion with constant stirring now you know when you are adding the mixtures they are always in the drop wise manner and 
uh, because I've been repeating this thing in every experiment. So you know the mixing of the acids, how you are going to mix them. And if necessary, with cooling, that means uh, every time we know, whenever we are nitrating, whenever we are using a nitrating mixture, what happens? It gives us an exothermic reaction. So that's why they said, it, they have written here in your scheme that if cooling is necessary, that means you need to, you need to monitor the temperature. Temperature should not exceed above minus 50 degrees uh, centigrade. No, okay, it should remain 48 or 40, um, uh, or 40, but not more than 45 degrees, I would suggest. It should not exceed above 45 degrees centigrade. Otherwise, maybe your, your compound is not going to prepare due to different reasons. So after the addition of entire benzene, fit the flask with the reflux connector and heat in the, um, uh, and heat under reflux in a water bath, maintain temperature at 60 degrees centigrade for about 30 to 35 minutes. Now the temperature of your water bath, now this whole assembly will, your setup is not complete. You will put, you will put a uh, water bath in, uh, under this and you will, your, if your water should be, this flask should be dipped till the half of this flask should be inside the water bath, right? Keep that in your mind and then you need to maintain the temperature of the water bath. Water bath temperature should not exceed above 60 degrees centigrade. That means there are two thermometers used in this experiment. One is inside this, this one and the other one will be inside your water bath. So that your water bath temperature should not exceed above 60 degrees centigrade. For about 30 to 35 minutes you need to reflux it, right? It should be refluxing. The flask is shaken frequently to ensure proper mixing of the two layers. Now there are going to be two layers, uh, separate layers will be formed and you are going to shake it like that. A little bit shaking will be done, right? To ensure pr proper pure mixing of the uh, reaction products, right? Cool and pour the reaction mixture in a beaker containing 70 ml of cold water. Now the refluxing is finished. After refluxing, you will again um, detangle your things and then you are going to add it into what? into a beaker containing 70 ml of cold water. You are going to drop it into cold water, right? Uh, you can use ice also or, and with a constant stirring again with a glass rod and by pouring the mixture uh, drop wise. There, you are not supposed to do it like that. No, drop it, uh, mix it in a drop wise manner and with constant stirring. Stir well and transfer the contents of the beaker to a separating funnel. Okay, they are using a separating funnel uh, allowed to settle and discard the lower layer of the acids, collect the nitrobenzene in a yellow liquid in a small flask. Okay, now they are using a separating funnel. I don't know if you have used just used the separating funnel. Have you ever used separating funnel? We use separating funnel to separate the different two layers, you know, two layers, right? The aqueous layer and the organic layer, right? So, and, some, and where is the aqueous layer? The upper layer or the lower layer? Which one? Okay, so it's like that. Now here, they, are, they have used the separating funnel. You are going to shake it and you are going to put it aside on the, on the stand. You are going to put it on a stand and you, will, you are going to wait till the layers form. And then you are going to discard the layer, the aqueous layer and the organic layer. You are going to save it. And that is going, going to give you the precipitates of metanitrogen. This is it, right? And then you are going to, of course, um, they use calcium chloride uh, to uh, dry it, right? Because uh, it's a uh, dehydrating agent. Now, what are dehydrating agents? Okay. Sodium bicarbonate is also a dehydrating agent. Calcium chloride is a dehydrating agent. They remove water molecules from the organic product, right? And then you're going to record the boiling point and calculate the percentage yield as required. So this is your experiment. I hope you will do it and you will do it in a nice way. Uh, Please uh, move according to your steps, right? You are supposed, because today I know you have no class. So do it properly because it was discussed in some WhatsApp group yesterday. I have uh, read. That was the information of the last group, I guess. Okay, so if you, you need some time for this experiment. So just start doing it and follow all the uh, steps. There are steps in it. First is first part is the mixing of the re reagents in which you are going to do the nitration, right? And then uh, by using by making a nitrating mixture, and then you are going to use the reflux condenser. And the third part is you are going to use the separate funnel.
to uh, separate the two layers and you are going to, uh, I mean, you will come up with your results. That is, you are going to get your product in the end. That is your paranitrobenzene. Fine? You follow all the steps? Okay. Any question? Anything in your mind you can ask? Same reaction material you are going to pour it. And then you are going to uh, shake it and then you are going to release it. The gas, if there is any gas, any pressure, it will it will come out. You will you will uh, hear a voice like that, right? Again you are going to shake it and then you are going to again release it and then you are going to put it there. For five to six times you are going to do this, uh, shaking and then uh, releasing the uh, nozzle so that the gas should come out if there is any. Otherwise just do it for four to five to six times and then uh, wait and just um, uh, put it there on the stand and wait for the layers to form. So in this way, you are going to use, uh, you are going to learn how to use a separate funnel, though you should be knowing it, you are now in your, I mean, final stages of uh, reaching to, uh, your final year, right? You, you will be in your final year in a few months. So you should be knowing how to use a separate funnel, how to use the reflux condenser. I don't know any other teacher have ever told you, any other teacher in M.A. Kazi has told you how to use reflexing, reflexing or reflux condenser? No. Not a single teacher ever. No. Aap batai? Kisi teacher ne kabi sikhaya hai yahan reflux condenser kaise use like karke reflexing kaise ki jati hai? Never. So okay. Aaj to aapko pata lag gaya. Now you know how to use and what is the difference between and why we use reflux condenser? Because there are toxic. I mean, uh, there are two uh, two reasons. Number one reason that we do not want to, I mean, uh, spoil the amount of the reaction mixture we are using, right? If it is 10 ml, for example, if you will not use and heat it, what will happen? The vapors will just uh, go out and they will simply evaporate and your react you are left with very low quantity of your reaction mixture. So to avoid the, that, we use the flux condenser. What will happen? The reactor vapors will go down upwards, move upwards, and then they will drop down, they will move upwards and they will drop down and in this way the volume you took initially will remain the same, right? Whereas, and number two, why we use it? These questions can be asked from me, these are very common questions. To avoid what? The fumes, the toxic fumes of benzene, the toxic fumes of nitrobenzene you are preparing, we use the flux condenser, okay? And the process of refluxing, this is, the reaction is progressing, right? At some temperature and you are going to get the product. This is also an additive point. Why we are using a reflux condenser? But these are also very important two points which I just told you. Not to lose the volume of the reaction mixture we reacted, we, we uh, took initially and not to face the fumes. That's it, right? Please use this, uh, make one group and use this assembly in a nice way. Do not break it because we have only one assembly. We begged it from, I don't know which laboratory we begged this. We don't, we are short of everything, so we are short of the assemblies. So please take care of this, okay? And this is, I'm sitting here and I was uh, videotaping on uh, my chemistry institute of chemistry right and i'm sitting here with my pen in my hand and after demands for giving them the demonstration to my students so now they are going to prepare and they're going to come up with come up with their different results i'm sitting just next to my lab and this is the beautiful view of dr Kremikazi institute of chemistry university of st john Shiro. now this is a small garden area it is supposed to be a garden area but it's not, uh, uh, unfortunately, nobody's paying attention. There are other things to, uh, I mean, pay attention to. This is a workshop over there. I used to get my, uh, I mean, many things repaired there during my research journey. I used to get my gas cylinders uh, repaired here and many other things the hot plates I used to use the heating mantles I used to use uh, during my research journey I, these all things I mean there are many help, helpers like Ali Raza 
he helped me a lot in my research journey so i'm thankful to ali raza mr ali raza he's a very nice man and he's a nice worker dedicated worker so he helped me a lot a lot in uh, arranging my uh, gas cylinders <laughs> with my assemblies so it's it's like that so i'm sitting here and watching all this beautiful i mean scenery it's a beautiful view and this is my lab this is the lab door where my students are working <laughs>